I bet you have never heard of this, guys. Hi, everyone. Did you ever hear of a invading subduction zone? Invading. So you really have to visualize this, ocean. guys. Where well, I'm we looking all know at the right Pacific out there. Fire. That's the Pacific plate, and we've got the subduction zone, uh, multiple subduction zones along this horseshoe formed ring of fire. It's called with lots of volcanoes and lots of earthquakes. Most of the Earth's active volcanoes and large earthquakes are located along the Pacific Ring of Fire. And there we have these subduction zones that can produce dangerously high earthquakes and tsunamis. But now we might see a new subduction zone being formed, not in the Pacific, guys. And, and here it comes crazy. In the Atlantic, the Atlantic might form its own subduction zone. It, it might close. But this would be a subduction zone, guys, that is invading the Atlantic. Sounds interesting. I hope it does for you. Let's look into this together because I really think this is fascinating. Because for some reason, a lot of things are moving towards the Atlantic. I just read a report that in the U.S., a tornado alley is moving more east towards the Atlantic. So are the subduction zones coming there too? Well, guys, this is real. This is not just speculation. There was a new paper that has been released and the paper is called Gibraltar Subduction Zone is Invading the Atlantic. Gibraltar, that is interesting. What has that to do with the Atlantic? It gets better, guys, I tell you. The Atlantic Ocean could soon be closed off by a ring of furious volcanoes. For now, the Pacific Ring of Fire, or they just call it the Ring of Fire because we only have one, is the most iconic geological features in the world, but we could get a second one. So the current Pacific Ring of Fire stretches 40,000 kilometers along the Pacific Ocean. It's home to 75% of the Earth's volcano and 90% of its earthquakes happen there, making it the world's or the planet's greatest hotbed of violent events. And yet this violent area might facing some competition in or because of dramatic tectonic stakes and shifts and some experts are warning that the Atlantic could eventually begin to close and form a ring of fire on its own. So if we look at the current map here that's the Pacific Ring of Fire and there you see every star that's a volcano and I'm also looking at some of these volcanoes on the west coast right now from where I'm sitting. So these are the culprits that I'm reporting yeah, on a regular basis because they keep producing these earthquakes basically every day, some of them. And I have reported that this Pacific Ring of Fire is increasingly active right now when it comes to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. If you are a follower of my channel, you have realized that because I keep reporting about the volcanoes and the earthquakes along the Pacific Ring of Fire. So how can the Atlantic like close? It would need to stop growing and shut itself off. And then new subduction zones would have to form from within it. So areas where one tectonic plate pushes another down into the mantle below. That's what a subduction zone does, right? It pushes it down. And since there's a lot of heat in the Earth's mantle, when this plate gets pushed down, the, the place that is the part of the plate that is steep down there is being melted from that heat. That thick rock and crust is melted. And by being melted, it's transformed into magma. Well, and then there's an abundance of magma close to the Earth's surface. And that creates the perfect conditions for volcanic activity and for new volcanoes. 
So all the volcanoes that you see on that map, the vast majority of these volcanoes and the earthquakes along the Pacific Ring of Fire, they exist largely thanks to the many subduction zones that lie along its path. If you live on the west coast of Canada and the US, all these volcanoes, we know this is the subduction zone, the Cascadia subduction zone that can produce if it's unlocked a magnitude nine plus earthquake and people say their scientists are saying it's overdue. So I have quite a few videos about that if you wanna check that out on my channel. So it takes a lot for these boundaries to form. So these subduction zones require tectonic plates to bend and sometimes fracture. That's a hard process to initiate given how strong and resilient these plates are. But what we learn from this new paper, Gibraltar subduction zone is invading the Atlantic. What they're saying is that, and here it becomes very interesting, the aged ocean lithosphere, like the crust and the mantle, is thick and strong. It makes it resistant to bending and breaking. They acknowledge that. But so then how could this new ring of fire be created. A possible solution to this paradox on how they call it, the new paper proposes that if subduction zones could migrate from an ocean at the end of its life, like the Mediterranean, to oceans at the peak of their geological life, like the Atlantic. Okay, I know guys, you will have a question, right? Why is the Mediterranean at the end of its life? That sounds scary because it's very well alive, more than we would like to, right? All the earthquakes and tsunami risk underwater volcanoes, caldera volcanoes, all these islands are mostly volcanoes. So what's going on? So the Mediterranean Sea is often described by geologists as being in the later stages of its geological life because of tectonic processes that are gradually closing it off. So the Mediterranean Sea exists at the collision zone between the African plate and the Eurasian plate. And the African plate is slowly moving northward, pushing into Europe. So over millions of years, this causes subduction of the oceanic crust beneath southern Europe. Mountain building, like the Alps and Apennines. Reduction of sea area as landmass is closing in. Geologically, the Mediterranean Sea is dying. The Tethys Ocean is gone. It's the, the Mediterranean is a remnant of the ancient Tethys Ocean, which once separated the supercontinents Gondwana and Laurasia. We have to go back in history to understand this. So that vast ocean closed as Africa and India drifted north and collided with Eurasia. And in the central and eastern Mediterranean, the ocean crust is being subducted beneath the Hellenic Arc, we've reported about that a lot, the earthquakes and the volcanoes there, and the Calabrian Arc. In the Western Mediterranean, the African and Iberian plates are converging, closing the Alborn Sea. So overall, this leads to a shrinking basin, particularly in the Eastern areas. So there's a few closure scenarios. They say that in about 50 million years, Africa could fully collide with Europe, eliminating the Mediterranean altogether and basically forming a Himalayan scale mountain range. So this would fully isolate or dry up the Mediterranean Sea. This is really sad. So, but much like the Mycenaean salinity crisis 5.9 million years ago, where the Mediterranean already nearly vanished due to tectonic uplift and sea level drop. Another threat to the Mediterranean is sediment infill and basin aging. 
So the basins are becoming shallower over time due to sediment accumulation from rivers and erosion. So with fewer deep marine basins, circulation weakens and salinity increases. I ma mentioned the Mycenaean salinity crisis. That's a precedent. Around 5.9 million years ago, the Strait of Gibraltar closed and the Mediterranean almost completely dried up and salt deposits several miles thick were left behind. And then when the Atlantic broke through again, it reflooded in a catastrophic event that possibly lasted several years. So is the Mediterranean dying soon? Well, not in human time scales. We're talking about tens of millions of years, but geologically, yes, it's in the late state of an ocean basin's life cycle. So did you know that oceans have a life cycle? Let's talk about birth, the Red Sea, for example. Use, expanding, that's the Atlantic. Maturity, stable. It's the modern Atlantic, old age, shrinking, Mediterranean, and death, collision and mountain building, Alps 2.0. So, new study says Gibraltar subduction zone is invading the Atlantic. Subduction zones could migrate from one ocean at the end of its life, like the Mediterranean, to ocean at the peak of their geological life, like the Atlantic. Still sounds crazy, but here's how this works. So the scientists are arguing that a subduction zone, which currently lurks under the Strait of Gibraltar, will eventually invade the Atlantic. This will then lead to the formation of a new subduction system in this ocean. In other words, <laughs> Here comes a line of volcanoes along the coastline of Africa and Iberia will form or an Atlantic ring of fire. There we go. And they say this will happen soon from now in geological terms, at least 20 million years from now. So the Gibraltar subduction zone, did you know that for the ones who have been there? It's known as the Gibraltar Arc. It was once very active, but it has significantly slowed down in the past million of years. But they have used state-of-the-art geodynamic models, as you see here in the, in the video, that reproduce the evolution of the Western Mediterranean. And that's how the scientists were able to conclude that the arc will propagate further into the Atlantic after a period of quiescence. But they're also pointing out to form a new ring of fire, you need more than just one subduction zone. So handily, there are two others on the other side of the Atlantic, the Lesser Antill and the Caribbean and the Scotia Arc near Antarctica. And still, these subductions formed in the West Atlantic around 50 million years ago, and they have been slowly moving ever since. So for them to win over the opening in the of the Atlantic, they will have to spread and eventually force the Mid-Atlantic Ridge to subduct. And this may take more than 20 million years. So whoever lives around the Atlantic, you're still safe from that for now. But what excites the scientists about the Gibraltar Arc is that unlike the Lesser Antill or the Scotia examples, which invaded the Atlantic already million of, millions of years ago, um, Gibraltar is still in the early stages of that process. So th this is called subduction invasion. So subduction invasion is inherently a three-dimensional process that really requires very advanced modeling tools and, and like AI and supercomputers um, to, to understand it. And 
all that was not available several years ago. So this is fresh research. And I think with the help of AI, the knowledge that we will gain will explode. Because now they, the scientists say we can simulate the formation of the Gibraltar Arc with great detail and also how it may evolve in the deep future. And I'm kind of thinking, hopefully, they will be able, hopefully soon, to predict maybe the large earthquakes, when or how this is moving, because we're way more able now to surveil these subduction zones. The scientists also said that while on the one side the Atlantic is closing and that might imply that the Pacific Ocean will open up even wider, but the scientists think the probability of this happening is not very likely. Everything seems to suggest right now that the Pacific will close. So if one ocean closes, there estimate is that another ocean has to open and that, that may be well be the Indian Ocean or even an ocean that may split Africa and Eurasia. So the scientists believe that the opening of the East African Rift will eventually create a new continent. And it might be the start of this along with rifts within Asia. It's interesting stuff. The Earth is currently changing. Nothing stays the same. We're witnessing some of it if we pay close attention. So in light of that, guys, I really, I, I sometimes think, is mankind completely nuts? You know, if you see what the earth can do and in earth's time, we're just nothing as short as we live. And then we really think that we need to conduct wars and fight each other it's crazy. I really think that. It's absolutely insane what we're doing. We should try to live in peace with each other and enjoy this earth while it lasts, right? Um, the more you learn about the earth and the history and what the earth is doing, you know, the more you understand how unimportant we are. But yet we think we are the most important thing right? That just on a side note, that, that just always what comes to my mind when I'm researching these topics, guys, and especially at the moment, because things are really getting critical. I mean, are we entering World War III? Or are we already in it, right? It's crazy. So yeah, guys, I hope you're doing great. If you want to support the channel, I have a buymeacoffee.com slash silky site. And uh, you can leave me a message there. I will answer with a 30 second video message. And then you can video me back. We can chat with each other. And hey, guys, thanks for the ones who leave me messages with video proposals. And I'm actually after this one, I will film the next one. Um, very interesting stuff. So thanks for giving me these tips. And I hope to see you soon, guys. If you want to become a supporting member of the channel, click the join button or the links in the description. Everything you find there for the coffee, for the membership. And thanks for the supers here on YouTube, of course. You guys are great. And leave it a like. Subscribe if you're new here. I would love for you to join our great team. Such, such a great team. So many nice comments, nice people. And uh, maybe you want to join the conversation. Take care. Bye-bye.